Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor K. I want to welcome you to Impact Live Worship Experience. Why don't you put your name in the chat box? Whether you're watching from YouTube or watching from Facebook, let us know who you are and where you are watching the broadcast. We have an amazing time of worship planned for you today. Uh, we are continuing our series of healing communities. And we have Pastor Glenda, who's going to be bringing the word in just a few moments after the praise and worship and after our time of worshiping and giving and sharing. And so today, I want you to recognize the power of us coming together. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Honestly, it can be very difficult for many of us to rejoice in light of the things that are going on in the world and in our world. Yes, we've had upheaval and insurrection. We've had all kinds of division, disappointment that's been going on nationally and within the world. And then some of us have not even been able to even consider what's been going on globally or, or nationally because of the stuff that's going on right here at home. I want you to know today, however, that God is an awesome God. He has kept you in this moment and he has brought you to this moment and will use you in this moment. We are anointed to make an impact. We don't just talk about it, we be about it. You know, this weekend, we celebrate the birth of a Christian hero, Christian prophet, a modern day Christian prophet, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I thought a lot about what I wanted to say concerning Dr. King. But what I will say is this, that Dr. King is one that makes me proud to be a follower of Jesus. He is one that used his Christian commitment to face the vicissitudes and the challenges, both personally and in the world. He faced him with courage, even when he was afraid. He faced him with commitment, even when he was knocked down. He faced him even though it caused him pain but he was able to overcome and he is an inspiration for me and for all of us that even what we're going through right now with Jesus and in Jesus, we can make it and we can overcome. That's why this worship is so important for today because the worship brings focus to our faith so that we might be able to know and see a God who was able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask and or think. Beloved, we serve a God that brought Moses out of the palace and the children of Israel out of Egypt. We serve a God that was able to turn the life of a prostitute around and make her the hero of the story in the story of Rahab. We serve a God that is moved throughout history in every culture and every time to impact and show his love to the world. We serve a God that came in Jesus Christ who came in the suffering of a suffering people to be raised up in the midst of poverty, to deal with oppression, to deal with struggle, to have lost his father, but in the midst of it all, his earthly father, I should say, but in the midst of it all, we serve a Jesus that came to be with us right where we are. And so he is worthy of our worship. Why? Because when we connect with him, he says, in this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And when you worship, you connect with the power of that promise. And so I encourage you today right now to recognize that you don't need a praise team in order to give God the glory. You don't need a building in order to lift up your hands. You, you don't need somebody to prompt you. All you gotta do is, as the Psalm says, think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you. 
and there should be something on the inside of you that stands up in attention. I'm telling you right now, there's something on the inside of me that stands in attention when I think about him, when I talk about him, when I when I meditate on him. And Lord, I thank you right now for the opportunity that we have together as a church to worship you even when we can't be in the same place, we can also be in the same spiritual space and frame of mind to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. And so now, God, we give you glory. Now we lift you up. Now we tell you thank you for all that you have done. And I'm asking right now, Lord God, that you will meet us in every single space in the moments of our lives. And we're grateful, Father, for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's have church. Good morning, Impact family and friends. Let's celebrate Jesus for what he said he can and he will do in his word. Amen. Let's give him glory and praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah.
Amen and praise the Lord. God is awesome. We want to thank God for that worship. And you know what? We have an opportunity not only to worship with the demonstrations of lifting up our hands, but we can worship through serving. And we can partake in the awesomeness of God by being a blessing to others. One of the things that our church is doing right now is providing sleeping bags and boxes of socks so that our homeless brothers and sisters can be covered during these cold nights. I'm encouraging you to look into your chat box right now and you will find a link that you can either press or put into your URL in order to order some sleeping bags and socks that will be a blessing to a homeless person even now. I'm encouraging you to do that as we speak. Now it's prayer time. It's prayer time. And as we get ready to pray our nationwide concerted prayer to end the COVID pandemic, I want to let you know that there's something very special concerning prayer coming up this week. This Friday and Saturday, we will be having our prayer summit. Now, our prayer summit will be on Friday night at 7 p.m. And it'll be on Saturday morning at 11 and it's going to be a powerful time of praying and worshiping and coming together as the body of Christ. And I want to let you know, it's not just for ministers. It's not just for leaders. It's for you. It's not just for people who are partners of impact. It is for all of us to come together. Listen, it's going to be right after the inauguration. So that's going to mean something very significant because we as a nation need to come together and pray. So join us this coming Friday as we come together for our prayer summit. Now, let's join together in the National Concerted Prayer. Let's pray. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. That's 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Lord Jesus, you are the great physician, a mighty God, awesome ruler, and the sovereign of the universe. First, thank you for always being present. The very last words you said before ascending to heaven were, I will always be with you. We ask you to move in our nation and in the world to stop this COVID-19 pandemic and push back sickness and diseases. Grant your people the spirit of faith, divine health, and gifts of healing to bring peace and release miracles. Glorify yourself in this season. Holy Spirit, we pray for an outpouring of wisdom upon every doctor, scientist, and leaders making plans, working to stop this plague today. Bring a swift and decisive end to the spread of this virus in the world. Lord, we pray that your church that is within each of us would increase in every community, every household, and every nation. Multiply and bring abundance for every good work in this season. You have given your church the authority, so we bind the spirit of fear and release the spirit of love, power, and sober-mindedness to your people. Thank you for answering us and moving to bring victory. First Thessalonians chapter 5, Verse 17 and 18 says, Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Impact Partners and Friends, for your generous support of God's work at Impact Church. Because of your love and faithfulness, we're able to touch people's lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ, care for other Impact family, and share love with our community. We have three ways for you to continue to support the Impact ministry. You can visit icdfw.org to give online or text ICDFW to 77977 to give by text. And lastly, you can mail your gifts to the church office. Whichever you choose to give, we're thankful for your generosity. 
It's because you choose to give cheerfully and generously that Impact is able to continuously accomplish our mission of transforming lives and transforming a generation. Great morning, great morning, good Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank God to be before you this morning. I am excited about what God is doing in this season in our uh, efforts to bring you uh, communities, healing communities. I am so excited about what God is doing. I thank God for you. And I stopped by to bring you a prescription. Yes, God has a prescription for us this morning. And it's right out of the word of God. This series is just what Dr. Jesus ordered. 
for the time in which we live. I will only bring you the good news. I can promise you that. Only good news coming from the healing communities. This series has been phenomenal. It's been phenomenal. It has been life-changing. I am excited about what God is going to continue to do as we go deeper into Ephesians, Ephesians 4. I bring a prescription and you know what comes with pres prescriptions is actually a warning label a lot of times. So let's go to the word of God. We're going to be going to Ephesians 4, chapter 4. Grab your Bible or your device that you're going to access the scripture with. And let's go there and read. Uh, we'll start with Ephesians 4, 1. And then we will go down to the 25th verse and read through 32. Let's read 44, 1. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. And then down to 25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let anyone, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. And thank God he has forgiven me, forgiven us. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning. We thank you, God, that you have opened up another opportunity to teach us from your word, Lord, what we need to know and what we need to do in this earth for you. God, you are the bomb in Gilead in all nations, and you live on the inside of me, on the inside of us. We welcome you today, God. Lord, speak to the hearts of your people. Decrease me that you may increase the more. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Upon getting the theme for the series Healing Community, I began to pray to the Lord and ask God, God, Healing Community, what's that all about? And Lord, uh, give me a vision. I wanted to know where we were going with this. I wanted to know all the nuts and the bolts, the who and the when, where and how of Healing Community. And God gave me this assignment. And this assignment in chapter four of Ephesians, it certainly opens up for us what the healing community is all about. It's about walk how you walk, walking worthy. Uh, what are you doing building up the, the body of Christ? So we're looking at what are our responsibilities building up the, up the church. And then new creation, making sure we're in that place of new creation, a new creation. And so we're gonna go deeper into this. Healing community actually is not just a title. And I want you to really feel that and know that as we go, go through this series, this is not just another series. God has ordered this study of Ephesians for such a time as now. The Ephesians letter exudes unity and oneness for the believers and the body of Christ. The book of Ephesians gives us our true north. I believe that we can all agree that the church is the healing community that will change the world. 
Paul prayed that God would open their eyes to grasp the depth of who they were and what they had in Christ. And so that's what we want to really look at and horn in on today. What do you know who you are and what you have in Jesus Christ? Because it radically changed the Ephesians. And guess what? When we really grasp who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ, our lives will radically change. The Ephesians were rich in Christ, but living beggarly existence because they were ignorant or lacked knowledge of their wealth. And because they had not seized their wealth, they were walking like spiritual paupers, spiritual bankrupt. And some of you today, you're not accessing much of what God has for you. And that's why you feel stuck sometimes. So you'll find yourselves, uh, before you know it, latching on to the ways and the thinking processes of the believers, unbelievers, or even some spiritually immature social media friends. You fall under the influence before you know it. As a pastor and servant answering the call of God, I feel the heart of Paul's prayer that uh, was so eloquently preached last week. I feel the heart of that prayer because that prayer kind of tells us where we're going in chapter four, because it does seem as though to me that church believers today may be in identity crisis, especially right now. Just as it was with Paul, there is an urgency for the church to get it right. Since the church is the healing community, families, neighbors, friends, enemies, your frenemies are depending on us. They may not even be aware that they are depending on us, but guess what? We have a responsibility. And that's where Paul is going in chapter four. For the last six months after seeing all the conflict and the, the difficult days uh, have, that have passed, my prayer is that God will reveal himself to watching believers and captivate the hearts of an unbelieving world. How many of you know that God is up to something? I want you to affirm that today, that God is up to something. You can shout it out in your chat. He is up to something. Don't you know that all the things that are happening are about something bigger, something bigger than what we see in the natural? And, and what's happening today, all this division in the natural is really about destroying the unity in the body of Christ. If you haven't got that, that's what it's all about. It's about destroying the unity in the body of Christ. The unsaved world is already divided. The world, the unsaved has always been divided and confused. My heart hurts when I see the church of believers divided and confused. It has always been, and think about this, it has always been since the beginning of time, Adam and Eve, it has always, always been the goal of God's arch enemy, the devil, to divide believers. Don't you see it? If you see it, you, you shout out again that you see it. I see it. I see it. If you think that all of this divisiveness is about the presidency, if you think it's about injustice in the world, be not deceived. It is much, much bigger than that. And you know what? God works everything out for the good of those who love him. But in it all, in it all, God is defining the church. And I am happy to be a part of the redefining of the church. The letter to the Ephesians was written to prevent problems in the church as a whole by encouraging the body to mature, to, to grow up actually. 
to uh, also it was written to make believers more aware of our position in Christ. Impactors, friends of impact, family friends, you need to know, you need to be sure about your position in Christ, where you stand in him. It really reflects on how you live every single day. In another location, Paul said to stand and above all things stand. Basically, stand in who you are and what you have in Jesus Christ. Don't get sidetracked. We have here at Impact Church many opportunities for us to grow up in Christ. We have many opportunities for us to be, become mature. And you know what? We're all growing. We're all growing. We never arrive on this side of heaven. One of the things that I want you to be cognizant of is we have coming up very soon an opportunity, and it is the Prayer Summit. This is a, a summit that we come together every year to get reset in Christ on what Christ's plan is for the church. But in all of that, you get reset in your own individual, personal spiritual walk. We also have what we call our seven steps to transformation, cultivation process, bringing healing and spiritual maturity in the house. You know, we have girl talk for the ladies. We have chop it up for the men. We have discipleship groups. You have no excuse for immaturity in Christ in this day and time. Not knowing who you are and what you have in Christ. Uh, remember that knowing it is living it. And that's a healing community when you know who you are in Christ and you live who you are in Christ. I want to share with you as we are looking at healing community and what that looks like, especially for us individually and of course us collectively, God did drop in my spirit a word to give to the Impact family about what this healing community is all about for us. And here's what that word says, and it comes straight out of his word. Isaiah 58, 12 says, Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to dwell in. That word is for you, Impact Church. That is for this house. And this is why God has us in a healing community. This is why God has us in this study of Ephesians 4. So I want you to really horn in on who you are in Christ, and what you have in him. We're going to look at Ephesians 4, and Ephesians 4, 2 through, through 3. It says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bear with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Now, these attributes are what Jesus displayed when he was walking on the earth. And you know what? They do not come naturally, but are cultivated in the church and causes you to mature and be able to bear with one another in love. And, and this bearing is not just putting up with people. It's not just putting up with folk. Sometimes, you know, we do that. It describes being patient with the shortcomings of others. When you ask God to be patient with your shortcomings and failings, do you practice the same type of patience with those in your circle of influence? You know, like your children, your bothersome coworker that trained you and now you 
uh, they are your supervisor. Be patient. Those who will call you and ask you questions that with a little bit of effort, they can find the information themselves. Wow. How about someone that really annoys you? That really annoys you. That's okay. You can confess it. I confessed it. You can confess it. We fall down, but we get back up in Christ. And here's what God has really been uh, dealing with me about in this uh, whole passage. A lot of, he dealt with me in many ways, but this came to, came home to me this week. Your calling from God, your calling is about living beyond yourself, beyond your will, beyond your desires, beyond your emotions. Did you get that? I, I'm going to repeat it. Your calling is about living beyond, beyond yourself, beyond your will, beyond your desires, and beyond your emotions. No one no one is ever going to be perfect here on earth. We know that. There is no perfection on this side of heaven. So we must accept and love other people in spite of their faults. When we see faults in others, especially fellow believers, be patient and gentle. Pray for him or her. Ask God to guide you in developing the relationship. If we are going to be a community of healers. It starts with healing in this community of faith with you and me. Repair, repair of the breach, going in the streets, basically. Build up the body of Christ. A healing community builds up the body. Are you building up others? How are you building up others? That's a question that everyone under the sound of my voice need to ask yourself. Do a personal introspection. How are you building up others? Are you building up your circle of friends only? Are you building up God's body? We have to work together to make the unity of the church a reality. Those who are in Christ, no matter the denomination, uh, the politics, and even the things that seem to divide the church the most, followers of Christ have a responsibility to display Christ's love, his patience, his humility, and his gentleness using all the gifts that God has given you to build up the church. The healing community. We are the healing community. Do you know what 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 really what we what we have in Christ? Do you really know what you have in Christ? It should be evidenced. It should be evidenced in all that you do. It should be evident in your lifestyle. It should be evident and visible, making an impact on the lives of others especially in the midst of all that's happening around us. Don't let our theme that we uh, uh, say every Sunday that we are anointed, <laughs> making an impact. We have to walk it. We have to live it. And we can only do that by knowing not only who Christ is, but what we have in Christ. When you and I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, he opened up your heavenly bank account. Yes, you have a heavenly bank account. Trust me, it is better than your earthly bank account. And in that bank account, we have adoption, acceptance, redemption, forgiveness, wisdom, inheritance, the seal of the Holy Spirit, life, grace, citizenship, every spiritual blessing that we need, you have the master card, the, the master card of all, the spiritual master card, and every promise is yes and amen 
healing, deliverance, saved. No matter what you face, you have everything you need for all seasons and climates of life. You have everything you need for whatever is thrown your way. Life and life abundantly. Grace, what would we do if we didn't have the assurance of grace? I don't even like to think about it. Citizenship, the earth is not my home. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of heaven. And that's why it's okay who's in the White House because God's in this house. God's in my house. Make sure God's in your house. I am seated and we are seated in heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing is available to me and you now. It's available to us now. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven to access the things of God and all the blessings of God. In fact, our wealth and worth is found in him alone. And you be good to remember that. It's found in him alone. Sometimes we get sidetracked and our worth becomes overrided with some things that are temporal, those things that will fade away. Our walk and wealth, our wealth and worth is found in him and him alone. Our walking worthy represents his kingdom. It's his brand, y'all. When we walk in his fashion, it requires poise and grace. He calls it walking in the spirit or walking worthy. And in the book of Galatians, he said, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh because we have new life and a healing community must have new life or it will not be a healing community. If you look at Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, it says you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Paul here demands a new creation to have a new thinking process. A new thinking process. We need to think like Christ thinks. We have, need to, to think like God thinks. And the Lord's process begins in transformation. Transformation of salvation. New life. You now look at life through the eyes of new lens, through, through new eyes, new lens, not as the world sees. You began to see things God's way. Who you used to be before Christ and who you are now in Christ. Your lifestyle is to be different. God changed you to be transformed, which opens the door for a healing community, transforming generations. Some of us don't even want to remember who we were before Christ. We don't even want to think about who we used to be, but thank God we're not who we used to be and we're not what we're going to be. I thank God for always having the privilege to get it better and to get right. Now your prescription this morning, as I said to you before, has a warning label. And in that warning label, we are to avoid some things in the healing community. We are to avoid some things in the church. We are to avoid some things in our homes, in our lifestyle. This is about lifestyle. And this is about how you think and decisions that you make every single day. Because these things are community destroyers, not community healers. It brings community destruction. And here are the warnings from Paul. Avoid lying, stealing, corrupt speech, 
corrupt speech. I'm going to say that a little bit more because I'm going to expound on that a little bit. Bitterness. Paul lets us know that there should not be a hint of this behavior in God's people. There is no gray area. People, there is no gray area here. Are you sending mixed messages, which can be confusing to others? The world is already confused, as I said before, but your mixed messages can confuse those in the body of Christ who are not mature yet. And you don't want to be a part of the community destroyers. You want to be a part of those that are building up the faith community, building up uh, the healing community. The world will tempt you to compromise the truth. And that is a demonic deception. You cannot use deception to build the kingdom of God. And, and anger, anger is a normal emotion, yes. Much to say, much has been said about anger, especially during this time, because many people are feeling that emotion. And it's okay that you have that emotion. God gave it to us. Uh, but emotions, I mean, anger is a normal emotion, but it must be without sin. We are big to justify our anger with, with reference about Jesus clearing the temple. But the scripture did not say that he was experiencing anger. He, it did not say, and he did not sin. So that is the key. Anger is expected, but do not sin with anger. Paul instructed twice about the words that come out of our mouths. Basically, watch the way you talk. Are you building up the church or imploding the church from within? You walk and talk and tear down the community instead of healing the community? Is that you? You have a responsibility as a community healer, as a son and daughter in Christ. Paul gave instructions about words that we speak, and I am led to push that out just a little bit further. Given the climate that we're in right now, allow me to just take you back to where it all began. When the Lord, when the world was void and in chaos, and fill with darkness. God spoke a word and he created the world as we know it today. Whenever the world appears chaotic in the natural, God wants to create again. He wants to create again order out of chaos. My sisters and brothers, as sons and daughters of the creator of the universe, made in God's image, we create with words. Yes, our words create worlds. What comes out of your mouth has great power. If we want to see the breakthrough, be the healing community. If we want to see order out of chaos, if we want to see light in the midst of darkness, make sure, so very sure, that your words are words of life. Speak words that build up and not break down. The offenses and the injustices that we have experienced and we are experiencing sometime even now are real, but your responsibility to the body of Christ remains the same. Jesus did not say the world would know him by our miracles, by our grand testimonies, by our mega buildings, or our vast Bible knowledge. The world will know him by the love that Christians show to one another. You are, we are a healing community. You, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you're a healing community in and of yourself. And tr don't cross the, the line of judging who is in Christ and who's not in Christ. That's not for us to care about. We need to know that we are. We need to know who we are and what we have in Christ. We can't name call and bash people. We have to make our language in season with salt because 
With our words, we can graffiti people's souls. We can tatter people up and leave something for life. We can use words to build people up and make something beautiful, a healing community. So it's our responsibility as a result of our position in Christ to bless those who curse you, love those who hate you, life and death are in the power of the tongue. It doesn't mean you can't speak truth, but it's how we speak truth. It's how we reach out to others. It's how we hold uh, on to hold a position of faith and hope in the midst of all that's going on around us. Jesus eats with tax collectors and sinners. And today, maybe that means eating with someone who is on the opposite side of the political spectrum or who is at a different place spiritually because ultimately you already know this no president no senator no political figure is our savior jesus christ is our redeemer and our savior and the government rests on his shoulder and thank god it does he is our redeemer Take hold of what God has given you. If you don't know what that is, let me tell you for sure. God sent Jesus as his son to die on the cross, a criminal's death for us, for you and for me. And I invite you now to take hold of your assets in Christ. I invite you to access what God has for you. Him first, Jesus first. And all that comes with Jesus, redemption, grace, mercy, take hold of God because God wants to take hold of you this moment. I ask you to become a part of a healing community. And I thank God that he has sent you way to this way to hear this word because it is a word that will change your life. God has called us. He has called you. I ask you to... Uh, come be a part of this faith community, this healing community. You can log on to www.icdfw.org slash connect and fill out the connect card so that we can contact you. We welcome you in to this house. We welcome you into the body of Christ. God waits for you. What are you waiting on? It is with urgency that we must know who we are in Christ, first know who he is, know who we are, and know what we have in Christ. Your life will be incredibly different. I thank God. I thank God for the healing community. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for the healing community that you've established in this earth. We thank you that we are a part of it. God, we give you glory and honor for the word of God that unlocks every door, every door. We thank you, God, for all the assets. We thank you for our salvation that's in you, but God, it's more than salvation. We thank you for all that you've done, all of who you are, and God, we take hold of everything, all of you, we want all of you, God. Nothing else will do. We give you all the glory, God, and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. undergirds and support uh, the men's ministry and I want to invite all the brothers uh, to our session every fourth Sunday we call it chop it up 
It's where we get on a Zoom call and we get together and we fellowship. Uh, we talk about our issues. We talk about our challenges. Uh, we talk about blended families. We talk about being a stepdad uh, in today's uh, world. Uh, we talk about all kind of economic issues. Uh, uh, we talk about who we're dating, uh, who we shouldn't be dating. Hallelujah to God. But uh, we invite you to get on that line and we we encourage each other, we lift each other up, we pray for one another. Sometimes we cry. Yes, men do cry. And, and we have a lot of laughter and, and fun and fellowship. Uh, but I want to invite each and every man, a nephew, cousin, invite your brother, invite your dad, invite your stepdad, your grandfather. We all take all kinds of brothers from all over the land. And we just want to invite you every fourth Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, we get on a Zoom call. And for more information on how to get on that Zoom call, uh, you can get online, I-C-D-F-W, that's Impact Church. Uh, or you can go to social media, Facebook, Impact Church, Dallas, Fort Worth. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. And we'll look forward to seeing the men on Chop It Up, Fort Sunday. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Our ministerial team is now available to pray with you individually and privately. Please join the Zoom link that is posted on the chat or dial the number you see on the screen. We are waiting to pray with you. Thank you for joining us for Impact Live Worship Experience. It has been amazing sharing this moment of worship with you. We at Impact believe in family. We want for you to connect with us. Please reach out and send us your prayer requests or your comments. And certainly if you've given your life to Jesus Christ today, we want to hear from you. Go to icdfw.org and click connect. Once again, icdfw.org and click connect. We are here for you. We are Impact Church and we are anointed to make an impact. And we don't just talk about it. We be about it.